Chapter 15 Two more, Eve said as she carefully balanced both her and Lisa back up the front porch steps. Good girl. She went to the sliding door and opened it, realizing she hadn't bothered to lock it on their departure. Oh, Lisa's hand grabbed onto Eve's arm, and the fingers dug further than they had the last time. Okay, breathe, breathe, Eve said as they stood on the front porch, the swirling snow whipping around them. I can't, it hurts, Lisa said in breaks and breaths. You have to, listen, you have to concentrate on breathing. Think about breathing. Agonizing seconds slipped by until finally Lisa's body relaxed slightly. You ready? Eve asked, and she waited for Lisa to nod before she helped the bent and huddled frame through the door. That one was closer than the last one, wasn't it? I've got to lay down, Lisa said, gasping through the pain that hadn't totally receded. Okay, let's get to your room. Helping her step for step, Eve's mind was like a laser. Just get her to that bed, and somehow they could deal with everything else. In the room, Eve worked to get the bed ready for Lisa to get into. Careful up. Lisa had hardly collapsed into the pillows when the next wave of pain hit her. Instantly, Eve huddled at her side and did what she could to ease the searing pain screeching its way through her friend. As that contraction slipped into the past, Eve began to seriously consider what her next move was. She looked around the room, really hoping that something would tell her exactly what to do next. When she found nothing, she straightened and assessed her options. There weren't many, and none of them made her feel at all calm. I want Jeff, Lisa said, her voice somewhere between weak and pleading. Okay, Eve said, seeing a break in what she could do. Her gaze swept the room. Dang it, I left the cell phone in the pickup. I'm going to go get it. You'll be okay? Lisa nodded with barely enough energy behind it to accomplish that. Okay, don't move. Don't worry. No answer, Jeff said as A.J. stood at his side at the base of the ski slope. A.J. exhaled in frustration as he looked up at the clouds now moving in over them, whipping the snow with it. Skiing was no longer so much as a consideration. Would they have gone to the hospital? I don't know, Jeff said, his face registering panic at the very thought. Maybe. Eve would have been smart enough to get her to the hospital. A.J. said, sounding far more sure than the pit of his stomach felt. Let's go get this stuff back. Jeff looked less than assured. With a tight smile, A.J. clapped him on the back. I'm sure everything's cool. We'll just go check. When Eve retrieved the phone from the front seat of the pickup, her first thought was to call the guys. However, she knew that getting the doctor was more important, so her first call when she got back into the cabin was to the clinic. Unfortunately, the doctor was already at the hospital, so then she had to call there. It was like playing phone tag with an invisible target. Busy, Jeff said in irritation as they stood in the rental shop waiting to return their gear. Well, at least we're getting through now, AJ said, sincerely hoping that was a good sign. No, we don't have another way down, Eve said as her mind spun toward the black hole of desperation. Which direction are you from the town? The receptionist asked. Um, we're, I don't know, left from if you're coming in from Albuquerque. Left? North? Yeah, I guess so. It's snowing pretty good up there, the receptionist said. Are you on the main highway? No, we're off, back in the trees, Eve said, hearing the panic in her chest jump through the words as Lisa screeched in pain from the other room. I don't know. That country's pretty treacherous if we don't have really good directions. Directions, Eve said, catching on the word. I have some directions. Instantly, her search mechanism lurched into gear. Where'd they go? They were here. The pickup. Just a second. I've got to get them. Adrenaline carried her right out of the cabin and to the pickup, where she ripped the door open and grabbed the pages. Here. Here they are. Yeah, north, the receptionist said her voice fading back in. I'm sorry, ma'am. The doctor says it's too dangerous to make that trek in this weather. The pages blurred in front of her. But we need him. 
He understands that, but in this weather it's too likely that he'll miss a turn or take a wrong one. No, no, you don't understand. I can't do this alone, Eve pleaded as another wail came from the bedroom. Lisa needs a doctor. If the weather breaks. No, by then it'll be too late. Please. You can call us back when the contractions get a little closer. Closer? No, they're... Good luck, and the phone clicked off. Here, let me try, AJ said, taking the phone from his friend when they got into the parking lot. There wasn't much more that he could do, but the way Jeff looked, he would be a poor translator of even the most benign news at the moment. The net beneath Eve's high-wire act dissolved, and she looked down at the phone in shock. Eve! Lisa cried. Is Jeff coming? Jeff? Eve asked, snagging on the name with no understanding. At that moment, the cell phone in her hand rang, and she looked at it for a minuscule second before pushing the on button. Yeah? Hello? Terror twisted through AJ at the first hint of the fear in her voice. He put a finger in his ear to block everything other than her voice out. Eve? What's wrong? Where are you? AJ? He heard the panic in the two letters. AJ, is that you? Yeah, what's going on? It was then that he heard the cry, and he knew. What is it? Jeff asked, pulling at the arm of his shirt. Is Lisa okay? It's Lise, Eve said through the phone. She's in labor. Are you at the hospital? No, Eve said, and tears crowded over the word. I got the pickup stuck. I can't get her out of here. She was hardly breathing through the words and the emotions. The doctor? He can't come. He won't come. The weather's too bad. What did she say? Jeff asked in wild-eyed panic. Is Lisa okay? AJ brushed him off, knowing he had to make a choice between them. He started the little car, realizing that sitting in the parking lot wasn't getting them any closer, any faster. Eve, listen to me. Where's the doctor's office? No, no, he's not there. He's at the hospital. Are you sure about that? He backed out and turned toward the front gate, which was nearly invisible in the snowstorm. Yeah, I just talked to him. Well, not to him, but... Another agonizing moan, and AJ calculated them in his head. Okay, listen to me. We're going to go get the doctor, and I'll call you back as soon as we're headed that way. No, AJ, don't leave me. I don't know what to do. Help her breathe he said, slowing his own breathing to corral the panic in his heart. Keep her calm. Give her ice chips if you have any. I'll call you back in a few minutes. Oh, okay, she said unsteadily, but no longer hysterical. I'll talk to you in a minute. They signed off as he pulled onto the highway. Snow hit the windshield so that visibility was cut to nearly nothing. It's bad, huh? Jeff finally asked, barely breathing. She's in labor. We just have to get a doctor up there and we'll be okay. Crud! Jeff hit the dashboard full force as his face crumpled on the news. I knew I shouldn't have left. AJ glanced over, but only for a brief second. You can't be with her every second. She's going to be fine. Just hang on to that, okay? Fighting the fear that looked more like anger, Jeff shook his head. We've got to get up there. We will, I promise. Everything's fine, Eve said in her best lying voice as she brought a cup of ice into the bedroom just as Lisa fell back into the pillows, spent from the last contraction. I brought you some ice. They said you can suck on it for a while if you want. Are the guys coming? Lisa asked, and her eyes held far more fear than they had when Eve had left. Her hair was damp from the sweat, and her chest rose and fell without taking in much air. They're on their way. And no reports of broken bones or anything? Not a single one. Jeff must have taken it easy on AJ. Lisa smiled weakly. I'm sure Jeff is the one you were worried about. You never know, Eve said. Him and Dustin could make hanging shoe racks look dangerous. A picture of Dustin fighting to keep the rack on the closet door while Jeff worked with a screw gun floated through her mind. Funny, that may well have been the first time she had seen Jeff. She couldn't really remember, there were too many other images to be sure, 
Nonetheless, Jeff's frantic attempts to get the gun going in the right direction, as Dustin struggled with the metal tubing, brought a smile to her face even now. Shoe racks? Lisa asked with a raise of her eyebrows. Haven't I ever told you that one? I don't think so, Lisa said, relaxing for the first time in more than an hour. We need to speak with Dr. Breeley, A.J. said, not trusting Jeff to be coherent at this point. They had already worked their way through a mini-maze of receptionists and nurses, and very few had been anything close to helpful. The nurse at the desk looked at him as if she would rather eat a raw fish. We have to talk to him right away, A.J. said, not willing to take the no in her eyes as an answer. It's an emergency. The skepticism didn't leave, but she picked up the phone and paged the doctor. A.J. looked at Jeff and nodded in encouragement. Minutes ticked by. Impatiently, A.J. looked at his watch. 2.30. He wished he knew more about how long Lisa had been in labor. He had known for nearly twenty minutes, but before that? His brain worked through the time they had been on the slopes. How long had Eve been trying to call? Or had she just started? May I help you? the voice said from behind them. And when A.J. turned, the antipathy he had felt toward the doctor when Eve had told him Breeley wasn't coming dissipated. Are you Dr. Breeley? A.J. asked the tiny man, who looked like he had to be getting close to ninety. I am. With white hair, sun-bleached wrinkles, and eyes hidden behind thick black-framed glasses, Dr. Breeley looked far more like a patient than a doctor. They said it's an emergency. Yes, sir, A.J. said, taking one look at Jeff and forcing himself to calm down enough to make their case. We have a woman in labor. She's up in the mountains. She's only about 36 weeks along, and they can't get her down here. This seems to be a pattern today, Dr. Breeley said, wrinkling his forehead further. But A.J. could see that the statement was not bitter, but of great concern for the doctor. We had a young woman call in earlier. That was probably Eve, A.J. said, putting the pieces together. She's with Lisa Taylor, Dr. Breeley said. Right, Lisa Taylor. This is her husband, Jeff. We were skiing, and Eve called us. They're stuck up there. The vehicle they had got stuck. The doctor pushed up his glasses in concern. I wanted to go, but I don't see as good as I used to anymore. Options flowed through A.J.'s head. We can take you. Consideration traced across the doctor's face. Let me get some things together. Great. We'll be here. During the contractions, Eve did her best to hold Lisa's hand and help her through them. Four minutes was a thing of the past. They were now at a shaky three, and Eve wished she knew at what point things were going to get really serious. She had managed to get Lisa out of her clothes and into her gown. She had also corralled all of the towels from the master bedroom and had them stacked near the bed, ready. Strange what little tidbits of information came up in the middle of a brain fraught with chaos. Towels, breathing hot water. She wasn't at all sure what to do with any of them, but she assembled them anyway. Nonetheless, at each contraction, she ran back to the room, fearing that the baby might make its appearance on any one. What she would do if that happened, she wasn't sure at all, but staying busy made that possibility seem less imminent. When the phone rang, Eve slid off the bed to answer it. Hello? Eve, how is everything? A.J.'s voice cut over the line, and she sucked in a ragged breath as she glanced at the sweat-soaked, exhausted figure of her best friend. We're hanging in. She stepped out of the room. Where are you? We just picked up Breely, and we're headed up there. You're still in town? She asked, having sincerely hoped that they would be only ten minutes or so from the cabin by now. We just left. The snow's pretty bad, so I don't know how great of time we're going to make. Lisa's cry of pain yanked Eve's attention back to the room, and she raced back in. She took Lisa's hand as panic surged through her again. It's okay, Lise. Breathe. In. Out. Breathe. Good girl. How far apart are they? A.J. asked. We're getting down to about three minutes each, she said as tears of helplessness washed over her. Listen, I'm going to put the doctor on so he can tell you what to do in case the baby comes before we get there. Before? No, A.J. She stood from the bed and walked out to the living room, pushing all the hair up to the top of her forehead in consternation. 
Look, I don't do blood, okay? I'll pass out. I will. I can't do this by myself. You've got to get up here. Eve, listen to me, he said calmly. If she doesn't go really fast, we should get there in plenty of time. But there's a chance that we won't, so I want you to talk with the doctor. No, AJ, I am telling you I can't do this. I can't. Do you understand me? I can't do this. Eve, he said, cutting into the panic. Look, you don't have a choice here. Lisa needs you. Tearful panic swept through her system at the thought of what he was telling her, even as the moans of agony sounded from the bedroom. I thought I always had a choice. Yeah, well, this time your choice is do it or find a way to do it. The choices, or lack thereof, wound through her until her brain wrapped around his words, and she realized he was right. She had to pull it together. There was no other choice. Okay. Good. Okay. Here's the doctor. A.J. handed the phone into the back seat, praying that whatever instructions the doctor gave Eve wouldn't totally freak her out. She was on the verge of losing it, and every word was more like a time bomb than a simple set of letters. As he guided the car around another hairpin curve that was only semi-visible through the snow, he glanced over at Jeff, who sat in dumbfounded silence. She's at three minutes, A.J. said. I should have been there. I shouldn't have left. Hey, man, this stuff happens. Babies aren't on the same schedule as the rest of us. When Jeff looked over at his friend, the helpless anguish there tore through A.J. like a knife blade. He had seen that same look before, on a sidewalk under the canopy of an inferno. That time, he had failed his friend, miserably. This time, he was determined not to. Solidly, he reached across the seat and gripped Jeff's shoulder. We'll get there. I promise. Jeff's eyes spoke of, I hope so, and I don't have a choice but to believe you. However, the overwhelming distress was still there. Um, Mr. Taylor, the doctor said from the back as he held the phone over the seat. Mrs. Taylor would like to speak with you. Gingerly, Jeff took the phone as A.J.'s heart went with it. Lise, Jeff asked, but the name barely made it from his lips. Hey, sweetheart, how are you doing? Yeah, we're on our way. We'll be there as soon as we can. I know. I love you, too. When A.J. looked over, he watched as utter helplessness washed over Jeff's face. I'm so sorry, baby. Hold on, okay? We'll be there. He wasn't even breathing anymore as A.J. reached over and took the phone from his limp fingers. The screams of pain still reverberated through the airwaves and A.J. had no question as to why Jeff's whole countenance had frozen dead with horror. A.J. righted the phone on his own ear as the noises on the other end stopped completely. Hello? Hey, is anybody there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, Eve said, not totally panicked, but certainly not calm. Running out of great advice to give myself, though. You know, think positive and all that junk. Believe me, it's highly overrated. A.J. laughed softly. Just remember, God'll never give you more than you and he can handle together. Oh, yeah? Then I'm thinking we're going to have to have a serious sit-down about that one. The line snapped in two as A.J. drove around another corner. He looked down at the phone, sighed, and hit the off button. The wipers beat back and forth so that he really needed both hands for driving anyway. Whether she knew it or not... Eve was far from the weakest spirited person on the earth. She would do whatever she had to do. His job now was to get them there so she wouldn't have to do it alone. The feeling of being totally alone swept over Eve when the line went dead. However, all it took was recalling the soft calmness of his voice to remind her that she wasn't alone. She hit the off button and set the phone on the dresser. The doctor had given her enough instructions to give her something to do. I think I'm going to hit Jeff over the head when he gets here, Eve said as she went about clearing everything that wasn't nailed down away from the end of the bed. Why's that? Lisa asked, as if she were hardly there anymore. He was all happy about getting a relaxing vacation yesterday, 
It's just like a man to leave me with moving all the furniture. She heaved against the chest at the base of the bed. When it didn't move, she went to the other side to pull on it. Don't hurt yourself, Lisa said with blurry concern. After another futile attempt, Eve opened the trunk and started pulling stuff out. Pile after pile, she set over in the far corner. That'd be good. Then they could take both of us to the hospital. Four people and a pregnant lady in one little car? I don't think... Pain closed in on Lisa before she knew it was coming, and instantly Eve dumped the contents in her hands back in the chest. She took Lisa's hand, which tightened around hers until her fingers turned white, but she hardly noticed. Breathe, girl, breathe. You're doing great. Short breaths. Work through it. Eve pulled her watch up to check the seconds that passed between the first hint of contraction and the end. Why that was particularly important, she wasn't sure, but it was one of the things the doctor had said to find out. So, find out, she would. How much longer? Jeff asked, glancing at his watch as his leg jumped up and down on the seat. How long since we left town? A.J. asked. He didn't want to take his gaze off the road for even a moment. On one side, he could see the mountain. On the other, he knew there was a drop-off, but he couldn't tell where the road stopped and the free-fall began. Almost an hour. It shouldn't be taking this long, Jeff said. Are you sure we didn't miss the turn? A.J. glanced down at the speedometer. The car was going barely ten miles an hour. It's the snow. I'm afraid to go any faster. No, no, I know you're right, Jeff said, although he didn't sound happy about the fact. It's too dangerous to push it too hard. Nonetheless, praying it was a good decision, A.J. pressed the accelerator down a fraction of an inch so that the meter crossed up to 15 and then near 20. Precious time was sliding by, and with every passing minute, they got just that much closer to being too late. The slow blink of Lisa's eyes made Eve wonder if she would have the strength to make it to the end of this road. Towels soaked with blood lay on the bathroom floor in direct line of sight from where Eve was as she sat down on the bed to retake Lisa's hand. She couldn't think of them. She couldn't think of anything other than making it to and through the next contraction and what she needed to do as soon as it was over. You look absolutely exhausted, Eve said as she ran her hand over the cold washcloth she had laid across Lisa's forehead longer ago than she could remember. Lisa's hazy gaze traced over her friend as she reached up and clasped Eve's hand. Thanks for being here. Eve smiled, hoping it didn't look like she was sitting by a deathbed. Hey, where else would I be? A jerk, and Lisa shrieked in agony as her body bowed over itself again. There was hardly a reason to time them anymore. By the time one stopped, the next one was only a minute away anyway. As Eve did her best to coach the hunched figure through the pain, the phone on the dresser bleeped to life. Wishing her arms were long enough to reach it without letting Lisa's hand go, Eve took two seconds to grab the phone before she returned. Yeah. How's Lisa? AJ asked without introduction. She wants to push, Eve said. The doctor's admonition from earlier to keep her from doing that still rang through her head. I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. We just passed the lake, so it shouldn't be much longer, A.J. said, and Eve's mind went about calculating how long not much longer could take. But the doctor wanted an update. I'll let you talk to him. Eve blew the hair up out of her face as she waited for the phone transfer. Eve? Dr. Breeley asked. What have we got going? As concisely as she knew how, although she didn't know the exact language, Eve relayed what she knew. We must be getting close, then. We can't wait any longer, Dr. Breeley said in resignation when she had completed the update. Okay, if she gets ready to push again, I need you to get ready to deliver this baby. Eve's breath caught. Towels, breathing, she could do those. But delivering a baby? That was far beyond her realm of comfort or knowledge. The rational part of her brain wanted to protest, but before she could, the doctor started going through the procedure and the protests vanished into concentrating on his instructions. You got all that? He finally asked when her mind had spun completely away from her on all of the information. 
Yeah, I think so, she said as Lisa curled forward again. Struggling to focus on three things at once, Eve put the phone to her other ear and bent to comfort her friend. Could I talk to AJ again? Sure, Dr. Breeley said. She breathed through the thoughts of the coming minutes. AJ here, he said with worry, but firmly. You're going to be here as soon as you can, right? She asked, trying to keep her voice calm and level. You know I will. This has been White Knight, Book Two, The Courage Series, written by Stacey Stallings, narrated by Becky Dowdy. Copyright 2012 by Stacey Stallings. Production copyright 2014 by Stacey Stallings. Never miss a second of the story. Like and subscribe to the Stacey Stallings YouTube channel today.